completely different. <laughs> <laughs> completely different is a understatement here, Gabby, as James has the Regilecki or Shifu Rapid Strike Incineroar Weezing. That's Kanto Weezing. That's the traditional Weezing, not Galarian Weezing. Uh, Lander Asterian and Togekiss on his end, where Fevzi has the Pokemon we've already seen throughout his run here at the Players Cup, like you had mentioned. Registeel, Incineroar, Thunderous, G Max Blastoise, the G Max Rillaboom as well, and a Lander Asterian of his own. The one thing that jumped to mind when looking at James's team, not even in the context of this matchup, but like just in general, was honestly, how is this Weezing going to fit in this team? I don't think it'll come into play into this matchup, but Weezing almost seemingly is at, going to act like a Spectrier where it has access to Will-O-Wisp, it has access to Taunt, it can still hit hard with a same type attack boosted attack of choice, most likely Sludge Bomb, uh, but Interestingly, it does have the neutralizing gas ability, which will disable the abilities on the field for both trainers. I don't think that's going to come into play here, given Fevzi's Pokemon and given how he's most likely going to rely on the Registeel and the Landorus, I would think, to deal damage to James's Pokemon. Uh, but if James decides to and he brings the Incineroar or the Landorus of his own, you know, switching the Weezing in and out will give him another opportunity to deactivate and re activate the intimidate abilities to like sort of stack up those attack drops on the opposing side of the field. I, I like I said, I don't think it's necessarily going to be relevant in this matchup. I think that there are a lot of Pokemon that James wants to bring and I don't think Weezing is at the top of that list, but it jumped out at me like immediately when looking at the team sheet and I feel like it's definitely worth talking about because you rarely see Kanto Weezing alone on a team like this. Yeah, I, that's what I was going to point out is in VGC, especially Series 9 and with Dynamax, uh, the Weezing is almost all exclusively tied to the hip of Regigigas, right? You put it right next yeah. to it, eliminate, <laughs> eliminate the slow start ability that Regigigas has so you can actually take advantage of its attack and its speed there. Um, so where in that case you're trying to negate a negative effect, maybe in this matchup, Weezing can potentially turn off a positive ability on the other yeah. end. I could assume that might be a, a factor as to why you would run Weezing without Regigigas. I don't know if it is going to be the option here, but I do think we should get started here in game one in this matchup between James Beck and Fevzi Ozcan. Should be an exciting one with some fun Pokemon on, on both of their ends, but we will see some staples, some BGC staples to start it off with. As Landorus, Reggie Lucky on James's end and Landorus Incineroar on Fevzi's side. I'm glad that we took the opportunity to talk about Weezing because I think that it's something that Fevzi has to be aware of in the team preview phase of this. I think he has to be aware of the fact that, you know, his abilities can and possibly could be used against him. But the fact that both these trainers relied on a bit of a more traditional lead, if you will, the fast Pokemon plus the Intimidate users is going to be really important. But already Fevzi showing off one key part of his team. Having White Herb on the Landorus means that these Intimidates from James's own Landorus won't stick. And that puts him in a position where James has to adjust his Pokemon. You don't want to leave your Landorus out on the field when it's at minus two attack. And Fevzi's own Landorus is free to just Dynamax, free to start going for those max air streams, uh, free to just start racking up that damage like we've seen it do throughout this tournament. The dreaded double intimidate lead is a physical attacker's worst oh. nightmare in VGC as James is forced to switch both of his Pokemon, revealing all four on turn one, being your Shifu and Togekiss. Landorus, oh, no. not falling for uh, the flying type there, decides to sword stance instead on Fevzi's side. So that's going to be a plus two boost to its attack stat. Uh, and he gets to stay there, right? Because the intimidate didn't stay. Uh, didn't stick from Landorus on the first turn. Now, James, if he wants to, he could switch Landorus in again to make it just a uh, a one attack boost on Fevzi's Landorus, but it still is very strong. It is very strong, and Fevzi correctly recognizing the pressure that the double Intimidate put on the field immediately from turn one. 
I don't think he was necessarily expecting a double switch. That's why that fake out went into the Reggie Alecki spot. Uh, but still, very, very key turn there because this Landorus with the plus two attack, even if James switches in his own Landorus at this point in time, is going to be quite the unstoppable force. A switch out of Fevzi there will also Dynamax the Landorus that we decided to Sword Stance on the previous turn. So you have Landorus and Blastoise on Fevzi's side of the field. James, no switch outs at this point on this turn at least, didn't want to get another Intimidate onto the field. Instead, we'll go for Surging Strikes from Rashifu, which is super effective one, but also a, a critical hit. No, actually, he goes into the Blastoise slot there, still having some critical hit damage, which helps, but kind of uh, counteracted by the fact that it is a resisted attack. So Blastoise really showing its defensive capabilities on the switching, and Max <laughs> Airstream <coughs> from Lander is just knocks out the Urshifu there, giving himself the speed boost as well. The only thing left on this turn will be from the Togekiss slot, which was the air slash clicking. No Dynamax either out of Togekiss. Instead, just a regular air slash into Blastoise, even with a critical hit, is not enough for a knockout. A great switch there by Fevzi, recognizing that the Urshifu most likely was going to target the Incineroar, probably not expecting to be able to knock out that Landorus at full health when it's Dynamax. Though it is worth noting that this Urshifu on James's side of the field is holding a choice band. So it, it definitely did more damage, but I don't think that, uh, assuming this Landorus is, you know, at least decently invested in bulk, uh, would have been a, a knockout from this range. Uh, Blastoise just doing what Blastoise does and being a tank. You know, taking those hits quite comfortably, sitting around on the field to be able to uh, go for at least a little bit of chip damage this turn, or even just ensure that the Landorus will have all the opportunities possible to go on the offense. Protect from Blastoise so the Thunderbolt will not damage it this turn. And Max Airstream into Togekiss, that Swords Dance boost. <laughs> Proving pivotal on Fevzi's end is that will be yet another knockout. That's two Dynamax attacks and two KOs for Fevzi. And James is really on the back foot right now, down to his Landorus and his Reggie Lucky. Reggie Lucky can't even touch Fevzi's Landorus. It can. And after the speed boost we saw on Fevzi's side of the field, we know that this Landorus is going to be faster than the Reggie Lucky and the opposing Landorus. Blastoise could go for some damage onto the opposing Landorus if Fevzi wants it to. I think that, unfortunately, as much as you and I love Blastoise, Joe, I think you let it take the hit, uh, get knocked out so that you can return the Incineroar or whatever your last Pokemon is to the field without having taken damage this turn. Uh, but still, a very well-played game by Fevzi. I think that Sword Stance turn one plus the double Intimidate just put so much pressure on James's side of the field that he really struggled to recover and that's gonna be something he has to keep in mind going into game two of this set because there's really nothing on paper at least punishing Fevzi from doing the same lead once again. Max Quake from Fevzi's Landers and that is going to make it three for three. Three knockouts from this Dynamax Landers on Fevzi's end so you can't you can't possibly have a more effective three turns of Dynamax here in game one and is it is now James's Landorus versus the world. And because of the speed boost from earlier, Blastoise is now faster than Landorus using Yawn to make sure it's gonna be put to sleep at the end of next turn, or I should say after it attacks next turn. I don't know if it's even gonna get that chance to attack uh, next turn potentially <laughs> when you have the ice beam from Blastoise and a, uh, a rock slide, a plus, plus one rock slide at this point. And there, you're just going to see the forfeit locked in from James and Fevzi wins game one in this winner's quarters matchup. I don't think we saw James Dynamax in this game. So admittedly, there is a condition or there is like a possible win condition here where you Dynamax your Landorus, you get your own speed boosts going and that's that gets you through the game. But I, I think that James just was forced to pivot so early on in game one, especially with the double switch. Like that is something that you really want to hesitate locking into because it essentially 
just stops any chance of momentum you have on your side of the field uh, from starting to get that ball going. You know, you're foregoing damage, you're taking a lot of damage. It's a very punishing choice if you make it in subpar circumstances. And even though James didn't take a lot of damage as a result of the double switch, the sword stance and then the immediate Dynamax of Fevzi's own Landorus after that double switch was just something that James never recovered from. Going into game three, I think you have to, going into game two, I think you have to anticipate the double intimidate lead from Fevzi. I think you have to anticipate having to adjust immediately off the bat, whether that's by leading the Reggie Alecki and the Togekiss, who are both special attackers who don't necessarily mind the intimidates, or uh, maybe it's just accepting that you're gonna be double intimidated and going for a sword stance of your own turn one. Uh, James needs to find that momentum early because in this game, it just was very, very rough to see him you know, not be able to really get any attacks in. Yeah, it's something that every like strong physical attacker has to deal with, right? Any, yeah. any physical sweeper. You know Landorus is very popular. You know Incineroar is very popular. They're, they have these ways. One, Urshifu kind of doesn't care as much because you always critically strike with the surging strikes in this scenario. But if you're just going to get knocked out because you don't have Focus Sash by the max airstream, that's another worry you have to face off. So what do the special attackers on James's end have to say about this matchup? Does to Dynamax Togekiss go for some super luck crits to try to force the game back? Does Weezing come around to turn off Intimidate? Is that an option? Not too so. sure, because it's because it's weak to Landers, right? So yeah. um, I think uh, this is definitely a difficult matchup for James here, uh, but let's see if James can force a game three in this matchup, or will his fate be sent down to the loser's side? Uh, this is, you know, it's it's so tough because if double intimidate just like counters your team, then you can't really do anything about it. But instead you will see an adjustment being Urshifu and Reggie Lecky on James Beck's end of the field and Incineroar Blastoise as Fevzi's lead here. And this is the perfect adjustment for James, or at least the perfect opportunity for him. He has the type advantages. Reggie Alecki stops the Blastoise. Her Shifu stops the Incineroar after a Intimid- or excuse me, after the first turn of Fake Out is gone. So really, this is a much better place for him to start off this game. And I think that if James is able to find a knockout as early on as these two Pokemon imply, I mean, Reggie Alecki and Urshifu are probably some of the most highest damage dealing Pokemon in the format right now. We could be looking at a very quick game too, but this time things falling in James's favor. No switch outs on either end. Another note I wanted to bring up was now if you click Surging Strikes, you don't have to worry about the Blastoise switching to be resisted, right? So yeah. if Landorus wanted to switch in or something wanted to get hit neutrally, it's going to have to take those critical hits from Surging Strike. Reggie Alecki will Dynamax on James's end here, so that's going to be a pretty strong max lightning attack in this position. And of course, you can't fake out a Dynamax Pokemon if that is what Incineroar wanted to do. But it is time and it is time Finally. for blastoise to shine <laughs> as g max blastoise hits the field this is a very exciting moment gabby and i have been waiting all players cup for four at this point to see g max blastoise <laughs> fake out into the urshifu max strike from reggie lecky will target the the blastoise that does absolutely nothing to blastoise showing just how much of a tank this turtle is will drop the speed though of it uh, but a g-max cannonade from blastoise is one of the strongest gigantamax attacks you can go for and that will do over half to reggie lecky if you kind of think about it since it gained double hp from dynamaxing that essentially would have been like a one hit ko on the regular reggie lecky but because of the extra hp it's able to stick around for this next turn as well the Reggie Alecki going for max strike there are more to be cautious of a lander is switching than anything else. The speed drop is nice, but Reggie Alecki and Urshifu were already out speeding the Incineroar and the Blastoise on Fevzi's side of the field. Uh, so a very safe play from James uh, going into this game too, I think, or turn two, he really needs to start finding those knockouts. Rillaboom with the switch into that Incineroar slot. So Fevzi showing off his Firewater Grass core here in this game. 
as the Incineroar switched out. And Wakan Berry from Blastoise will help it negate some of the damage from this electric attack. Still very, very strong considering that was, you know, supposed to be half the damage it should have been. We'll set up electric terrain on the field. So now future electric attacks will be boosted in their damage and surging strikes from Urshifu targeting down the Rillaboom. It will be a resisted attack. It will be though three critical hits from it. So that is the, the trade off as it kind of feels, especially thanks to the choice band, kind of feels like it wasn't resisted at that point with how much damage it did there. And G Max Candidate will be enough to take down the Reggie Alecki here. So Febzi being very strong on these first two turns of its Gigantamax on Blastoise. Is like getting rid of, J of one of James's best answers to the Blastoise, which was the Reggie Alecki. I love the walk and berry on the Blastoise for that reason, because it turned a situation where this Blastoise would have most certainly been knocked out by a single attack into a two hit knockout. That plus the residual damage on the field, thanks to the G-Max Cannonade, really shows why G-Max Blastoise is the Gigantamax Pokemon of choice for Febzy in this game. Unfortunately for the Rillaboom, the Regieleki was able to switch up the terrain, and as a result, Grassy Sir or Grassy Glide is no longer going to be in position to just switch that Rillaboom out, send the Incineroar back in, intimidate the Landorus in the process, and have Blastoise find one more knockout on this last turn of Dynamax. Fake out from Rillaboom into James's Landorus that just switched in here. The Surging Strikes, they're critical hits. They're resisted, and it looks like even with three of them, it's not going to be enough to take down this bulky water type. It's going to be able to get one last attack off on its third turn of Dynamax here. So that will be the G-Max Cannonade into Landorus, and Fezzi is really just running all over this matchup claiming knockouts left and right here james down to his final two pokemon that incineroar is really going to struggle to find an opportunity to attack the blastoise on fevzi's side of the field fortunately for james the urshifu should be able to pick up that knockout for it but with the Rillaboom and the Incineroar and still one other Pokemon that Febzi has in the back of his party, you have to assume it is going to be that Landorus. I think James has a uphill battle here. He can go for a fake out of his own this turn if he wants to try and, you know, find her Shifu an opportunity to get an easy knockout or maybe just stop the Blastoise from attacking for one turn. Uh, but there still is going to be the threat of the Intimidate in the back and the threat of the Landorus as well. If I were in Febzi's position, knowing that James is down to his last two Pokemon, I would prioritize knocking out that Urshifu with whatever Pokemon I have available to me, knowing that the Incineroar just just won't be able to do enough damage to take out what I have left. Rillaboom switches out into Incineroar, one to get the Intimidate off, but two, because with Electric Terrain on the field, you want Rillaboom to switch back in so it can get the Grassy Terrain back and have priority Grassy Glides. So uh, that definitely the decision out of Febzi's end here and Surging Strikes is able to take down Blastoise, but Blastoise did more than enough in this game to, to uh, show why it is such a strong Gigantamax Pokemon in this format. Flare Blitz doing resisted damage into the Incineroar. It really does nothing to Incineroar. I think the residual damage from the Cannonade honestly did more to James's Incineroar. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind as it looks like we are getting down to the wire here. I'm glad that James was able to find that knockout on that Blastoise. And, you know, even better news for James, it looks like Febzi has decided to leave the Landorus behind in this match and instead bring that Thunderous. Urshifu is going to struggle with this Thunderous because it is going to be able to hit it super effectively with those electric type attacks. Uh, but Incineroar stands a chance, and I think it's really James's Incineroar that we have to be keeping an eye out for here. As if James can find a way to get that Rillaboom back out onto the field, you know, that's a Pokemon that Incineroar can knock out and bring us into a game three with. 
Fevzi with the fake out Thunderbolt into Urshifu, knocking it out there and not even needing the electric terrain boost, obviously, since it's flying type, doesn't affect it. But being a water type, it is weak to Thunderous. Flare Blitz not doing too much damage there into Thunderous. And so with this three to one Pokemon count, Fevzi is in an incredible position incredible position to move on in the winner's side james kind of you know debating back and forth and there is the forfeit so fevzi ozcan will win this winner's quarters match and 